i would like to share some of the information about uh, <laughs> yourself so let me uh good afternoon everyone and good morning to you sir and <laughs> i beg your pardon for making you awake early in the morning it's all, uh, i think it's early 6 uh, o'clock there in uh, alabama right Correct. Uh, so, <laughs> and uh, uh, sir, we are very grateful that you readily accepted our invitation. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Singh sir might have joined. Singh sir is there. Sir, are you there? Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Krupa Shah. Uh, on behalf of IQAC and Department of English. I'd like to again welcome you, and we have reached at the final phase of our two days international conference on the role of technology in humanities. And today, in this last uh, session, we have with us our eminent speaker, Dr. Michael D. Lazarwood. He is a professor of Romance languages and linguistics, and he is a former chair of World Languages and Cultures. Uh, he did his MA in history from Vand uh, Vanderbilt University and MA in French from Tennessee Universities. Uh, he teaches all uh, levels of French in both graduate and postgraduate programs. Professor Leisurewood loves traveling and he has traveled ex extensively across Europe and has been in 40 con 42 countries. He has given papers and presentations in Europe, Australia, Singapore, Japan, China, India, as well as in, in, in many American states and Canada and Mexico. In addition to this, uh, uh, he teaches a summer graduate course in technology and language learning at uh, State University of New York at uh, Stony Brook. And he is very active in his profession and was recently president of International Association for Language Learning and Teaching. And that, uh, we are very grateful, sir, that uh, you are uh, today. You are here with us, so I warmly welcome you all. And uh, uh, the mic is all yours now. Okay, thank you, thank you, Dr. Shah. Um, yeah, and, and my, my PhD is actually from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill in Romance Languages and Literatures. So I did um, graduate classes in French, Spanish, and Portuguese and Romance Linguistics. So um, again, it's um, 4.30 there. I promised to stop at 5.30 at the very latest. And what I'm going to plan on doing, people, is give you a chance to ask questions of me as well. So I'm going to try to stop. Uh, it's about 20 minutes left to give you a chance to go ahead and ask questions about anything that you're interested in. All right, let me give you a little bit more background. Um, I'm. This is my 45th year of teaching. How about that? And... <clears throat> I teach a variety of things, and I do teach in the humanities. But I also teach in the social sciences. So if you're interested in the social sciences, we can talk about that as well. All right. Um, where I am, um, I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, which is the largest city in the state of Alabama. Uh, Alabama has over 5 million people, I mean, nothing compared to India. But, you know, it's not a small state. And Birmingham has over a million people in the metro area. Uh, my university, Sanford University, is the largest private university in the state. Again, nothing compared to India, but we have over 500, we have over 5,500 students. And, um, what I wanted to talk to you about is essentially how we had to make the change to completely online teaching and what that was like, right? And again, we were not prepared for it. 
So I want to sort of give you some strategies for going on to online teaching. Uh, I know that the COVID you know, outbreak in India is also not good. Here in the United States, it's really not good. Um, my university does plan on reopening in late August with certain changes and certain restrictions. And we shall see how that works. All right. Uh, but first of all, a, a thank you to Dr. Shaw and again, Dr. Singh. And um, thank you for the invitation to speak. Uh, I was very glad to get that and very happy to speak. The, um, and I, I have very fond memories of Anand and uh, Patel Arts College. Um, very fond. I mean, one of the things I was tempted to do, which I won't, was to share the video of my welcome there at Anand and at Patel Arts College. Uh, and again, the president was so incredibly kind and gracious to me. Um, and it's a video I show to my students. So that actually sort of fits into what I'm supposed to be doing, I think. So the video <clears throat> starts with, you know, me being at the villa outside of town with the peacocks and uh, the lovely room I had. And um, just, how love, just how lovely it was, to be really honest. And then the, vi the, the videos, the second sequence is the formal, well, it wasn't formal, but the dinner that evening, um, which was just beautiful with a lovely buffet <clears throat> and the splashing fountains and the neon lights. And of course, I was there during Diwali, or Diwali, however you pronounce it in Hindi. And of course, that is the Festival of Lights. And it was just, it was wonderful to see all the lights. It just was. And then the third sequence is <clears throat> um, the surprise for me, which was a welcome by all these students. And... I don't know if you've ever had, if you have ever been treated like a rock star, but I was. I mean, I, there must have been three thousand students yelling at me. And then Mr. Patel says, "Okay, you need to make a speech, and you have one minute." There's the mic. Okay, all right. Um, and I don't, don't remember what I said, but I guess it was good enough because the balloons went up in the air and the confetti came down. And then I went and did workshops. And um, Dr. Singh is actually in that video. Um, just sort of doing this. So it's, um, it was quite an experience. So I'll never forget um, the college. I'll never forget Anand. And it was actually my second time at Anand. I mean, the first time I was there was for a, um, for India call, <clears throat> which and Dr. You know, um, Chato Pai can talk about that. But I was there for India call, which had a joint meeting with Asia call. And call means computer-assisted language learning, just in case you don't know. And so <clears throat> I was a keynote speaker there. And Andrew Lee asked me to, to be part of that. <clears throat> and, you know, quite experienced, to be honest. And got to meet people from all over the world, uh, some of whom I'm still friends with, uh, including from Malaysia and Japan, as well as India. And I have about 
goodness, probably 130 friends from India on Facebook, something like that. So again, India has been very important to me. And I've learned a lot from India. And I even have family in India. And so I've been to a, um, a, a wedding in Rajasthan. And I share video of that as well with students to sort of teach them about India. Uh, Americans, as, as you well know, are often sort of deficient in terms of our knowledge of the rest of the world. And I mean, yeah, I, I have no problem admitting that. But um, one of the things I do in my teaching is try to teach my students about the rest of the world um, and, and other cultures. And that's one of the important things I try to do, I think. And actually now I've been to 48 countries, by the way. So, and I was hoping to go to two more this summer. I was planning on being in Lithuania right now, uh, teaching high school students in a summer language institute, which is intensive English. And I was gonna teach the Wizard of Oz. And if you don't know it, it's a very interesting work. And the person who wrote it, L. Frank Baum, again, this is humanity, so, it was a um, reformer. And so the Wizard of Oz is actually a thinly veiled um, series of metaphoric stories <clears throat> asking for reform in the United States. And then the... Um, so I was going to do selections from the text the first week. Then we're going to do the movie the second week and, you know, work with students on their aural and oral. And I'm pronouncing those two words differently on purpose. In American English, they're usually pronounced the same. So just oral. But, you know, aural, if you wish, oral, if you wish. All right. So the... Um, and then the third week, I was going to work with the uh, musical The Wiz, which sets the story of the Wizard of Oz in New York City in the 70s. And it has an entire, the, the entire cast is African-American. And again, as you know, um, the United States is trying to wrestle more appropriately with the problem of racism. And so I was going to be using that to help address, well, to talk about that issue and perhaps address that issue as well. So, okay, let's go back to the point. So last semester, I was teaching a class, I was teaching a second semester class in French. And yes, I mean, that's my first foreign language, I have five others, and I know I should learn Hindi, but I haven't yet. The, um, <clears throat> although I'm wondering if Russian may be my next language, and let's not get into that. The, um, so I was teaching French second semester. I was teaching our cultural perspectives class the second semester, and you know, one of the things about Sanford that's interesting is that we have every undergraduate, every undergraduate is required to do uh, several courses in a core curriculum. And so um, students have to do what we call cultural perspectives in two semesters. And what cultural perspectives are, well, is rather, um, is more or less great books, okay? And the idea of great books comes from Columbia University in New York City. And the, um, essentially what it is, it's trying to introduce students to 
great works of human civilization. And, and that's a really tough aim, people. It's just, I know, it's really not easy. But in the first semester, I start with Babylon. And I start with, um, <clears throat> you know, what, and then I, we, we go to ancient Greece, ancient Rome. But I do talk about India as well. And I do teach some basic Hinduism. Um, and I teach basic Buddhism. And I teach basic Confucianism. And then I teach Islam as well. So, again, so Americans can know more about world religion. Okay. I mean, I'm not an expert. I understand that. <clears throat> but at least something. And then in the second semester, so we go from the Babylon to Shakespeare in the first semester. In the second semester, which I was teaching when everything happened, we go from the Reformation in terms of Christianity in the 16th century to the 21st century. And I do a lot of different philosophers. I do a lot of history. I do some economics. And um, again, some language. So <clears throat> I was teaching that class. <clears throat> I was teaching second semester French. And then I was teaching intercultural communication, um, which I've just started teaching because I was on sabbatical in Lithuania in 2019 at a university there. And I taught two sections of intercultural communication to 56 students from 20 countries. I learned so much. I learned so much. Um, the students had to do project, had to do um, projects they had to do present, excuse me, they do presentations. And um, they did PowerPoints in, in groups of four. And I more or less insisted they had to be from different countries. And so um, I wish I had recordings, I don't. They also had to do journals every week on the themes that each chapter in the intercultural communication textbook included. And I don't have access to those either. They're all on my Lithuanian email, which I don't have access to. But again, I learned so much from them. So we talked about all the big issues in that class. And then when I was teaching it for the first time last semester at Sanford as an upper level class, uh, we sort of tried to follow the same format as much as we could. So, <clears throat> uh, we try. But again, all we, we all the big issues, people. So, we talk about life and death. And we talk about, you know, funeral customs. We talk about, um, again different attitudes towards both. And then we talk about religion, as you would expect. And again, in Lithuania, many of my students are agnostic or atheist. Again, being from the former Soviet Union. And again, no surprise, I don't think, to anyone. And we talked about how they feel about that. And then... Um, we talk about issues of sexuality and marriage and family and what family means to everyone. Again, what kind of families do we have? And that gets to be fairly intense. And then um, we talk about, oh, you name it. We, have an, we do 10 days on business practices and so I teach them about different aspects of how different cultures do business 
and what makes sense. So in terms of like even something as simple as how you greet somebody. <clears throat> so how do you greet somebody? I mean, you know, do you bow? What do you say? And we have a chapter on communication theory. Uh, quite interesting. So if anyone wants, you know, the, the reference to the book, you know, I'm going to give you my email at the end so you all have, have access to me and to my email if you want to continue a conversation. So <clears throat> anyway, the, um, and, and other issues as well. So people, those were the three classes that were suddenly online. Excuse me, <clears throat> it is early. The um, so we got the so again again. I don't know how many of you know the American system, but in the spring, we, we generally speaking, we have two semesters. So we have a fall semester; it's fourteen weeks. We have a spring semester, fourteen weeks. Finals are an extra week, usually. And so um, this whole, the whole virus thing, it started to become obvious in February. And people started to try to figure out what to do. And then students went home in March, mid-March, <clears throat> for spring, well, actually early March, <coughs> for spring break which is more or less, including the weekends, 10 days off. And the university administration decided students would not be coming back. <clears throat> and so suddenly, we were completely online. Yeah. Now, as Dr. Shaw said, um, I do have experience teaching online. And I've been teaching online since 2000, a graduate class in technology and language learning for State University of New York at Stony Brook in Long Island in New York. <clears throat> but that's asynchronous. It's not synchronous. And I was using Blackboard, which is a data warehousing uh, management program, and, and, and which works well. Okay, I like Blackboard. I've been using it off and on for years. So, I mean, since the 1990s at least, because I was, was at Stony Brook starting in 1994. So, <clears throat> And then I came to Sanford here in Alabama in 2007. You know, that completes the biography. Anyway, so, but the university said, you got to be synchronous. And so I went, okay. Um, and, and thankfully, I mean, thankfully, this is my field. I mean, my field is technology and language learning. And so what I was able to do was to start to convert what I was doing to synchronous online. And the university has a subscription to Canvas, which is another data warehousing you know, platform, uh, which is freeware. But again, the, the version you get free is not wonderful. So you have to have you know, instructional technology people, you know, tweak it and tailor it so that it works for you, okay? And again, that's not cheap. So, so they said, use Canvas conferencing. And I said, okay. And eventually they upgraded Canvas to a better version and, but when I was using Canvas conferencing, the students could see me, I couldn't see them. 
And that just did not work for me. Um, as you guys can probably already tell, I'm a very physical teacher. I'm the kind of teacher who's in your face. <clears throat> I'm very interactive. And so I go around the room a lot. I mean, I don't snap my fingers. Okay, let's not do that. But I say, okay, here's the question everyone has to answer. We're going around the room. Everyone has to answer the question. So, you know, with Canvas, I mean, I'm going to try it again this fall because supposedly we're coming back live in late August, but supposedly we're going to be half live and half online. I'm not sure how that's going to work. And we're supposed to be practicing social distancing. Uh, <clears throat> there'll be the students will be sitting a chair apart from each other. Okay. And um, again, I'll be wearing a mask at the front of the room, uh, which doesn't make language teaching very easy. Let's just be honest. You know, you have to see my mouth when I'm teaching a foreign language, a second language, if you wish. Et donc, quand je parle français, il faut qu'on qu me voit. Il faut qu'on voit la bouche. Et il faut qu'on voit ce que je fais avec la bouche en train de produire les sons. Anyway, so, um, and actually this fall I'm teaching two sections of first semester French to 44 students. And actually last semester, um, in addition to the three classes I mentioned, uh, one of my colleagues has a medical condition, uh, which is not virus related, it's, it's pre existing to the virus. But she had to take medical leave. And she sent her fourth semester French class to an adjunct. And then when the just 10 more minutes, and I'll let open for questions. And then when the, um, the adjunct realized that the class is going to be completely online, she just sent me an email in panic. She said, uh, Mike, um, I can't do this. I'm technologically challenged. I can't teach online. I don't know what, how to do it or what to do. Would you do it for me? Well, what do you do, you know? So I wound up teaching that class as well and getting those students, you know, through the last semester of French for most of them. And it was a challenge. Um, okay, what I'm doing now, people, and again, this is probably even more relevant. I normally teach Alabama Governor School in June and that's uh, a school that takes place on Sanford's campus uh, for gifted students from all over the state and who come to, to campus for a couple of weeks <clears throat> for enrichment. And I teach a class in global citizenship. Again, somehow you're not surprised. And so I teach them about the world. And again, that, I show my videos from India in that class. And um, so as you would expect, the, the Alabama Governor's School was canceled because it just wasn't safe for students to come to campus and to be together and congregate in this particular climate in this particular country. So, um, It was canceled. And I thought, wait a minute. I know how to teach online. 
And <clears throat> I've been experimenting with Zoom. Like, obviously, we're all using Zoom right now. And um, I thought, let me offer that class. And I'll do it for free. And I'll see what I can do to make that class as similar online as it was live. All right. So <clears throat> I wrote to the head of governor school and I said, hey, um, I'll offer global citizenship if you'd like me to. And I'll do it for free. <laughs> I'll do this in my heart. And I do have... Anyway, and he said, wow. He said, we have 100 students who are accepted. And if you want to send a note to them, I'll give you their emails. Really? So I did. So I sent them an email, and I said, I'm going to do this for free. And here is a schedule of classes. And this is when we're going to meet. And I sent them the course outline, <clears throat> which I'm happy to send to all of you guys if you're interested. The, um, essentially, it's just a look at the world. And, and of course, in two weeks, you're, you can't do anything in depth. No. But it sort of gives you ideas. It gives you thoughts that you can sort of go, oh, interesting. I want to explore that more. That's what it does. It tries to open your mind to other things, other cultures, other experiences. And I share my stories from my travels to the 48 countries as part of the course. But in that particular course, <coughs> again, excuse me, um, we do field trips and we do experiences to get them off campus and into the city to experience things. And so on the first Friday of the class, we go to a restaurant that has a cuisine unfamiliar to them. And they discuss on Monday what that should be. And here in Birmingham, we have lots of choices in terms of different cuisines. And um, then on Wednesday, we started to go to another restaurant with a different cuisine. And we go to the Birmingham Museum of Art, which is lovely people, it's a small, museum but it's just a gem downtown and it has what's sort of unusual it has a lot of decorative arts now what i mean by that yes you've got your paintings yes you've got your statues yes you've got representations from art from all over the world including india um but it also has furniture it also has rooms that are decorated with furniture. It looks so that the rooms, again, the rooms are exhibits, right? But the rooms look like what the rooms would have looked like in the past. So there, for example, for those of you who are fans of the UK and Britain, um, there's a room with the Wedgwood China and um, 18th century furniture and the blue and white wallpaper. Again, if you've traveled to England, you've seen some of those houses probably. But again, for the French guy, for me, there's, all, there's also a room from the period of Louis XIV. Well, that's not true, Louis XVI. Uh, 18th century again. And um, again, you sort of see the, the more gold, the more ornate, and you see the heavier. 
And so, um, again, you sort of get, okay, say, okay, fine. At this period, the UK versus France, and the UK, you can see, was on its way to more of a democracy. And you can see that France was not. I mean, just by the furniture, just by the decor. Um, and you can see why the UK did not have a revolution when France did. Okay, well, that was a little political. Um, <clears throat> so what I said to the students, I said, okay, fine, let's be creative. So in June, I had uh, 15, and I'm now teaching a class again with eight students. Again, free. And, um, and people, I can afford it. I mean, okay. So the, um, and, and I need to do this kind of thing just to keep my mind occupied. It's like I'm loving talking to you guys. And 64 people now, I mean, come on. That's sort of cool. Thank you guys for being here. I'm running down in four minutes and opening up myself up for questions uh, because I have until 7 a.m. my time and, you know, 5.30 your time. The, um, <clears throat> but I said to the kids in the governor's school class, I said, okay, we can't actually go to an ethnic or a different cuisine restaurant, but I want you to do it virtually. So I want you to, the internet's a wonderful thing at times, right? So I want you to go to the internet. I want you to find a restaurant with a cuisine you don't know and pull up a menu and then decide what you want to eat. And come to class on Friday and tell us what you found, what kind of restaurant, and what you would order. That's worked brilliantly. <clears throat> so yes, so actually, Friday now, the, the students did the restaurant, the second class did the restaurant exercise. And some of you will laugh out loud. So I said, okay, find a cuisine you don't know. And, you know, one student picked Indian. Um, and what she ordered would make you laugh, perhaps. But, um, <clears throat> you know, one student picked Korean. You know, one student picked um, Thai. Again, all that was expected. But I have two students who are Indian American in the class, and I have two students who are Korean American in the class. And what two of them chose in terms of a cuisine was Greek. Was well, like one student said, "Hey, you know, Dr. Ledgerwood. I mean, I've been." I've eaten all, every kind of Asian cuisine you can imagine. And I know it well, but I don't know European cuisine. Well, that was quite a learning experience for her. How about that? Um, then, instead of going to the museum on the last day of class, what they do is do a virtual museum tour from anywhere in the world. Doesn't matter. And um, in June, one of the students went to Japan, to Tokyo, because he's very interested in culture. And again, we can talk about that. Um, and probably about the misconceptions of samurai culture. And yes, I have been to Japan. The, um, and anyway, and then once you know, two students went to France because they knew I would enjoy that. Uh, two students went to the Pergamon Museum in, in Berlin, in Germany. One went to the British Museum in London. Again, some of you have been there, I'm sure. And then 
one of the students um, said, okay, I didn't get the lesson. I, I didn't get the memo, you know, properly. And I went to the National Civil Rights Museum here in Birmingham. And I said, wonderful. Thank you. And then he talked about it and talked about the times he's been there. And then <laughs> my African-American student, she piped up and she said, you know, Dr. Ledger would, I've been there. My parents took me when I was six and I didn't understand it. And I saw the, the mannequins, uh, mod, the dummies, models, what word you want to use, with the white robes. And I thought they were just beautiful and elegant. And I said that to my parents because I, I have an interest in doing design, in clothing design. And when my parents explained what those robes were from the Ku Klux Ku Klux Klan, you know, the white supremacists who terrorized African Americans for decades. She said, I had nightmares for weeks. All right. So another virtual exercise, and there are things that you can do uh, online to replace some of those exercises and, and field trips and field experiences that we require at my university. So we require service learning, we require service projects and communication studies. Again, I'm now part-time faculty is there as well, as well as in world languages and cultures. So again, there are things you can do. Okay, people, I've run over what I wanted to do in terms of talking. It's um, less than 20 minutes until I'm done. So I'm going to open the floor for any questions or comments. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, is there anyone who wanted to interact with sir? Or is, do you have any question? Somebody has turned their mic. Please kindly turn off your mic. I, I, I kindly request that kindly please turn off your mic. Dr. Punima. Please turn Can off you your please? mic. Yes, it's it's creating noise. Okay. Is there anyone who would like to uh, ask? If you have any question, please raise it right now. Yes, yes. You have a time. And everybody, I just sent you on the chat box to my email. You can type the message um, if you want. Yes. Yeah. Vivek, sir? Yes. Yes. Uh, I had uh, some uh, observation to make, not actually a question. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Dr. Lejewood? Yes, sir. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Kapoor. And I have been teaching English for the last 27 years. Now, uh, the kind of, uh, it was a, a really brilliant talk and a real eye-opener. And what I personally feel is these days there is an insistence on the lab-to-land experience. And I think the way you teach your students, that is really the you know uh, requirement, the need of the art. When we need to connect the students to the real-life situations, 
because you know just classroom teaching or just online teaching or limiting them to the books or to the uh, you know even the digital platforms is not sufficient we have to think beyond that and your i think you are uh, in a way i i consider you as a trend setter you know talking about uh, you know cross cross culturalism connecting them to different cultures to different through cuisines through you know different uh, artistic things and uh, that is really a, a brilliant thing and um, i think uh, teachers need to like uh, academicians need to think about it uh, to really connect the students to this kind of experience this is a very innovative i found it very innovative so thank you for sharing your experience sir uh, my pleasure my my pleasure sir um <clears throat> the um it's it's been a challenge to be honest and um you know one of the things i didn't do today uh which i often do do is i often use music as well because i'm a musician and i sing in two different groups and i play instruments as well uh, in fact i sing in a in a francophone group which i mean which means we all we're all french professors and we sing in french <laughs> and then i sing in a bluegrass group and um <clears throat> we actually do different kinds sorry of sorry to interrupt you sir sorry to interrupt you sir dr pundima kindly please turn off your mic you are disturbing please yes sir and um we we sing different kinds of country music as well and we do performances at different places some of which are for or or you know free performances just to help people and help them you know sort of enjoy music again so one of the places we sing a lot is a retirement home and um you know so we have you know people who are in their oh 70s or higher who come and enjoy the music and they enjoy trying to sing along and I try to move with the music as well. So again I I guess in a sense that's a kind of mission if you wish in 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 the term of that particular word. It's in fact a form of purgation you know through music you can have a purgation to your you know vent all the uh, emotions that are uh, you know building up within you you can give a vent to it with the help of music. So music as a remedy I would say. Absolutely correct. I agree with you. Um S- someone I was looking at the chat box someone had a question about second life um one of my colleagues at Sanford um did you second life for teaching german and um he's he gave conference presentations about it and one of his colleagues from southern illinois who's native polish she participated in that in no sessions and you know people i i found second life cumbersome and um <clears throat> it's if i can say it this way it's sort of passé um i mean it's sort of out of fashion if i can put it in, into english instead of french and again it's expensive and and it's I I just couldn't justify making students pay for the expense of it. So, um but you know, he did something quite creative the colleague. So what he did was um he was trying to excuse me, he was trying to teach um uh prepositions in German which are difficult. Again, a uh, wide variety and again you have different cases in german so you know you have accusative versus versus dative and um so he set up this exercise in second life where the um the students had to get the right preposition while walking across this very narrow crosswalk over the the sea the ocean and um which was filled with sharks with big teeth right and if they got the the preposition wrong that fall into the water and get chewed on 
get eaten. Um, and so, again, um, it worked. You know, students didn't want to get eaten. <laughs> A little extreme, perhaps, but, you know, um, but it did work. And it was a, it was a fun presentation. All right, let me look back at the chat again. Yes, definitely thank to Dr. Krupa, Dr. Farmer, Dr. Singh, uh, Dr. Gupta. And let's see, is there anything else I need to do? Because I'm now down to 10 minutes. Uh, I had something to share. Go for it. Hi, Mike. How are you? I'm Jitendra, if you've forgotten my face. Oh, never. After a long time. <laughs> <laughs> never. Uh, so first of all, I must really thank you for accepting our invitation. And it's a wonderful opportunity like uh, to be able to see you, listen to you after such a long time. Uh, your talk was really wonderful. What I appreciate about your talk is that uh, it wasn't overburdened with theory. It's like heart to heart, teacher to teacher, practitioner to practitioner kind of talk. So real issues, real world issues, real teacher issues. And I'm sure many of the participants would have felt like that. And the activities that you mentioned about the cuisine uh, thing and the uh, virtual museum tour thing, they are also so practical, so easy um, activities which we could always uh, try in our online classes. So I'm sure many participants would go ahead and try them. And that gives me ideas for at least uh, 10, 15 of my online sessions, language teaching sessions. So I must thank you for that. And uh, uh, so thank you. Thank you, Mike. It'd be my pleasure, Jitendra. And I uh, must also uh, thank you for the... Um, uh, wonderful words you said about our college and uh, <laughs> uh, and our management here. Yeah, thank you. And, and, and I, I hope you did hear that you're a star in one of my videos, which oh, I shared. I didn't know that. <laughs> I must see that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you, uh, I'll send you a link on, on however you wish. But And I have it pulled up. And I thought about showing it today. Uh, and I just thought, no, no. That's like this. I mean, it's like I'd be patting myself on the back somehow or other. Because it has, again, you know, this, the, the villa I stayed at outside of town, outside of Anand. It has the, the restaurant I went to with Mr. Patel and the discussion we had of an important book for him. And then it has the welcome with the thousands of students screaming at me and the balloons and the confetti and the whole thing. Yeah, there's a lot to catch up. Like we'll discuss that more later again. Yeah, so uh, I'll allow Dr. Krupa to <laughs> actually uh, allow other participants to uh, share their feedback. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you once again. My pleasure, everybody. Uh, it's less than, it's about five minutes left. Anybody have anything else? Okay, okay. Uh, I think uh, we should move ahead. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful session. Now I'd like to invite our uh, head of the department, Ms. Mittal Maikman, to propose a word of thanks. Mittal, ma'am, over to you. Ma'am, can you please uh, turn on your mic, please? Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes you are yes, right now. Oh. Honorable Michael Leatherwood, sir, respected principal and your participants, a very good evening to one and all. Being the head of English department, I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this memorable day. I express my deep sense of gratitude to Leatherwood, sir, for accepting our invitation and for being available for our conference. Sir, your eminent presence has indeed made this event a memorable one, and we unitedly thank you for your gracious presence. Your speech brought new insights and motivation. We are highly grateful to you, sir, for a very informative session with a great presentation. On behalf of the entire institution, I thank you, sir, from the bottom of my heart. 
as it is the last session of our two day international conference i would like to convey my sincere thanks to all enthusiastic participants without whom the event cannot be even possible i appreciate your active participation in all the sessions of our conference thanks to all we are grateful to you all i express my deep sense of gratitude to all our eminent speakers for sharing their precious thoughts and highly informative sessions an event like this cannot take place overnight the wheels start rolling weeks ago we have been fortunate enough to be backed by a wonderful principal dr manoj patel sir the event becomes possible only because of his constant support and guidance our heartfelt thanks goes to all the staff members of our institution and all those persons who guided us to make this event a great success special thanks to our technical support team sapnil hards utsav and darmesh for working really very hard to make this event successful last but not the least my team special thanks to dr krupa and dr vivek for making all the necessary arrangements an international day conference is organized for the first time in the history of our institution and we the members of the organizing committee are very grateful to one and all for making our event successful finally i wish you all a very good health in the time of pandemic stay home and be safe thank you very much thank you thank you ma'am uh, uh, thank you once again mike sir uh, uh, for joining us now uh, a good bye thank you sir thank you it was sir. really wonderful it was really wonderful experience sir thank you very much sure uh important instructions to all the uh, participants that the link of feedback uh, form will be uh, mailed to you by the tomorrow morning or evening so uh, uh, don't uh, uh, get stressed or uh, don't get worried as i have seen uh, that some of the participants were continuously asking for the feedback link but as i have said uh, earlier in the very first day that the link will be given to you by mail so all i i request you all the participants uh, once you get the link kindly fill the lead by, uh, feedback form uh, correctly uh, because whatever you are filling uh, that will be uh, 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 given in the uh, certificate so please make sure uh you will feel the feedback form and will uh, you will send it to us uh, and one more thing actually uh, yes, yes. yeah one more thing uh, the certificate of the web conference will be sent to you post 15 days of the successful completion of the web conference so please take care of it okay uh, so you have to fill up the feedback form then and only uh, you will be given the certificates so please do that uh, have first. some patience have some patience and all will get the certificate and It once again it is to do that once again uh, i congratulate congratulate to every participants for uh, uh, joining us and i am very very much grateful to you all thank you everyone okay it was a nice thank you sir thank you so much manoj sir yeah even manoj sir manoj sir want to say something manoj sir is here congratulations Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir, for your constant support. Otherwise, it is not possible, sir. It's only because of you, sir, your motivation and your encouragement that made this successful event. Yeah, आप लोगों का बड़पन है कि मुझे आप प्रेरित दे रहे हो, लेकिन आपके बिना ये possible नहीं था. ये पहली बार ये possible हुआ है. Of course, due to you. without your support could not happen any kind of program in this institute um really my heartly congratulation all of you three person uh, mr krupa vive yes sir bahut khush bahut khush thank you very khush. much sir so and, much. and we need Sir, we need your blessings always. 
and all credit goes to you sir always, actually, always. you worked uh, you always. actually uh, answer us at the midnight as well i remember <laughs> <laughs> very good <laughs> Now, uh, is there anyone who wanted to share your experience with us? As still, we are open for two five minutes. Yes, I would like to. Yes, who's this? Hello, it's Forum Patel. Mittal yes. Madam knows me well, and I'm happy to yes. see her on a screen. Yes, Forum. Uh, yeah, yes, you can. You are from Sankom, right? Thank you. Forum, turn on your video. From uh, I cannot. <laughs> I'm at home. <laughs> it's okay, Sunday. It'll be fine. It's it's Sunday, so I'm okay, just. Uh, uh, actually, it was a wonderful experience, uh, like uh, keeping it uh, international uh, yeah. instead of a uh, national one. And you have uh, really, I would uh, appreciate that. Uh, appreciate with all sense of uh, logicism, practicality, and utilization of material and interaction. That it was really international scale. you you keep you kept it international uh, not simply in uh, terms of words but you have uh, really kept it international you have international speaker and they uh, talk so uh, uh, they kept it the interaction uh, global one and practical one that this is the anandar school how can not possible anandar school everything is just random or funny you will not best to reach also knows you probably i have been a uh, uh, Yes, yes. Yes, I know you. I That know was you. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Yes. Now yes. where are you? In Forum. I am working with Samcom sir, English Medium College, okay. under Vidya Nagar. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yesterday yes. you presented your yeah, paper. You were yeah. the next candidate only, right? Yes, I was second only. Yes. 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 Second. Second. Okay. Okay. Uh, the alumni of Anandar College, Rupa. Huh. I, I, the alumni of Anandar College. Department yeah. of English. God, yes, yes, God. yes, yes, yes. Of topper, course. sir, topper of our department. She was the wow, topper. Wow, great. Sometimes <laughs> <Santa, laughs> she was working in another school, right? Am I wrong? Yes, yes. No, no, no. You are right. I worked with Anandar's college for a very short period of a time, short but that period. was yes, good. Yes, yes, that, yes. That then, then we are uh, Vina Maida. <laughs> yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Then, the the man we are fortunate in our college. Anyway, thanks to uh, the team. Congratulations to the entire team. Always Same a proud yeah. team of Anandar's College. Happy to Same see yeah. you all. Thank okay. you. We are constantly you. trying our best to serve you better. Yes. Okay. Vivek. Okay. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you so Bata much majama? for your guidance. Yes, sir. Fine, fine. You want to say something? Yes, sir. Yeah. Because. <laughs> Yeah. Because uh, th there is no other chance to 